So I'm just going to do a little introduction to give you guys an idea of what Dime Stories is all about. When most people think of spoken word performance, they think of poetry, of poetry slams, poetry open mics. I used to think that poets had all the fun, and so every now and then I'd sneak into a poetry open mic and read short prose. Sometimes you can't tell the difference unless you actually see the line breaks. You tell me, is this poetry or prose? I close my eyes and will my heart to follow the rhythm of drums. Instead, my breath reaches deep and the saxophone blows night air, touching the moon high above the ponderosa pines. I am bare feet, a purple mountain lily, batik skirt swirling in the afternoon sun. Thick dollops of rain drop thump and we continue to dance until we are sliding on the meadow grass wet with mud. Well, I can tell you it's actually prose because I wrote it myself as part of a larger piece. <laughs> but you know, if you pause just right, it could be poetry. Um, so anyway, about five years ago, San Diego novelist Amy Wallen had a vision to create a place for writers of prose, very, very short prose, to read their work out loud in front of an audience. She called the event First Fridays, for obvious reasons, and later renamed it Dime Stories for not so obvious reasons, except that like a dime, they're small and compact. Uh, and now they take place in San Diego, New York, Orange County, California, and right here in Albuquerque. Um, so this is our celebration of our first year. And so we've invited all of the people whose work has been selected as best of each month to come back and celebrate with us. So um, thank you, everybody. Uh, and for those of you who have not given it a try, here's some tips. Number one, select the right piece. It should be a story. It can be fiction or nonfiction, but it should have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it should be short. Three minutes. That's about 500 words. It's always good to leave your audience wanting a little more anyway. Bernard Cooper said that the short form has an alertness to detail, a quickening of the senses, a focusing of the literary lens, so to speak, until one has magnified some small aspect of what it means to be human. My second tip is edit with a razor. Look at every word. Look twice. Does the word belong? Can you read the selection without rushing before the beep sounds? If not, go back and cut more words. Can you read it without stumbling? The last thing you want to do is get to a phrase that doesn't tumble off the tongue naturally. Stand up straight, or sit straight, <laughs> as the case may be. This is really important because it allows you to breathe and better use your diaphragm to its fullest potential. And speaking of breathing, don't forget to breathe. You really don't want to pass out in front of an audience. <laughs> uh, next, make sure you know the microphone. Watch how the MC treats the mic. Generally, you want to be about 6 to 12 inches away, maybe a little to the side, but each microphone has its own personality. Uh, and you want to speak slowly, clearly, and vary your tone and rhythm. This will create interest and allow your audience time to process what you're saying. And don't forget to pause. Create a space for your listener to visualize your words. And finally, look up. Nobody wants to see the top of your head bent over a piece of paper. Make eye contact and smile. You're supposed to be having fun. So without further ado, let's start having some fun.